here is my review of the iPhone 16 Plus after using it for a few weeks. Originally, I wanted the best that the iPhone has to have, which is the iPhone 16 Pro Max. But due to availability and shipping time, I wasn't going to get into the end of October. I wanted something that I can get as fast as possible, and it ended up being the Plus, which is even faster than the base model. So I prioritized convenience over anything when choosing the latest and greatest iPhone. I've never used any Plus models in the past, including Samsung's own S lineup that I'm a big fan of, but I know iPhone has been having incredible battery life over the last few years. And this one is no difference. After me using this phone, I got 48 and a half hours of battery life on a single charge. And I did put the phone through really rigorous testing, at least by my standards. Usually I don't really do anything too crazy, but I'm recording videos like these, 10 to 20 minutes long. I'm playing Pokemon trading card game at least an hour or so a day. And I even avoid charging it on purpose when I'm driving in a car. Using it, usually if I'm driving around, normally I have um, on my Samsung phone, I would just use the wireless Android Auto. Sometimes I would just connect it in to get the better charging because wireless Android Auto kills the phone battery really fast. But on the iPhone using the wireless Apple CarPlay. I still let it run normally driving around anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour back and forth. And overall, the battery still lasts me two full days. Just want to give a quick shout out to my partner Mint Mobile. Currently they offer a 5G plan for as low as $15 a month. You do have to buy three months up front. You get access to unlimited data, talk, and text. Overall, it is a great deal, so make sure to check them out. Link in the description below. And this is much better than most Android phone I have used. Even the best that Samsung has to offer, the $1,800 Fold, the Galaxy S24 Ultra, OnePlus, and all those other phones. The best one I've used personally from the Android side is the OnePlus plus 12R, which averaged about 36 hours of battery life. This one pretty much crushed everything. And I think the biggest reason for that, I mean, the chip itself is really efficient. But in addition to that, I noticed that it is only 60 hertz refresh rate. And on top of that, it does not have always on display. <laughs> and I did not know that when I bought the phone. So one of the first things I usually do when I get a new smartphone is go into setting and turn always on display. And I realized it was not in a plus model. So for for a phone that costs almost a thousand bucks, it does not have this basic feature. Apple save it specifically for the Pro model, so if you want that, you gotta prepare to drop at least a thousand dollars or more, which is unfortunate. Always on display has been around on Android phone for hundreds of years now, <laughs> since the Galaxy S6 is the earliest that I can remember. It's a basic function that you see on any other phones under six hundred dollars, and it's pretty common. Unfortunately that um, Apple left it off here. So just in terms of Apple to Apple's comparison, no pun intended, I guess the next phone I use, I can put on 60 Hertz refresh rate and turn off always on display. But always on display is one of my favorite feature on any smartphone. It doesn't change the world or anything like that, but I like the fact that I can lay the phone on the table and see all the notifications just by glancing at it. Versus the iPhone, I literally had to pick it up and unlock it and see all the notification from there. So something pretty minor, but for me, it makes a huge difference. I guess it gives Apple another reason to sell the Apple Watches. If you buy that, then you see all the notification that comes in and can handle your notification that way. Battery life blew away my expectation, even though it doesn't have always on display. And 60 hertz refresh rate is fine for me. A lot of phones that have 120 hertz refresh rate or more, it's nice if you're doing gaming and I don't know, aggressively scrolling on Twitter. <laughs> for, or for me, for the most part, I don't really care about 120 hertz refresh rate but I do care about the always on display. Size wise, I think this phone is pretty big for what it is, 6.7 inches. And the hardest part about using an iPhone this big is reaching the notification. On Android phone, you can swipe anywhere on the home screen and you can pull down the notification panel. On the iPhone, you have to, there's like on the left hand side, you have to reach all the way to the left, pull it down to access the notification. And then on the right hand side, you gotta pull it down and access the notification panel. I guess I think I like the Android uh, UI better. You can just pull it down. The uh, widget panels on top, you can turn off Wi Fi and all that. And then the notification itself is right below is all in one area. On Apple, they have it tucked on two different sides. One side is the notification, the other side is the widget, which I'm not a fan of. 
if you if you have two hands it's fine but for me a lot of time when i use my phone it is with one hand i'm carrying uh, one of you around so my hands are always tied literally so when i do want to use my phone for to check something quickly it's easier to use a smaller phone than a larger phone and a larger phone i guess i don't mind it being large if they made the notification a little bit easier to use to access i would have been happier and then one new feature <laughs> quote unquote feature that is finally different on the iPhone this year I guess not just with the 16 itself but the latest iOS is you can drag the icons anywhere you want all the other last 10 to 20 years anywhere you drop an icon it'll just snap back to the top I mean in terms of being neat and clean I get it but when these phones are getting larger and larger I specifically want to put all my apps at the bottom so I don't always need to reach all the way to the top to use it at least they kind of they fixed that this year which is nice and with the new year you get a new color I went for the teal color if you go for the pro model you get the more basic color if you go for the lower end model this is technically considered lower end i guess mid-range lower end <laughs> it's still close to a thousand dollar phone but it's not considered pro you get more color options which i do like these days these phones don't really change that much you get a new color you get a new chip but there's always a new chip i don't think it really changed that much year to year to be honest nothing is life-changing the chips have gotten so good over the last four years that it's kind of a moot point if you get any of the latest flagship you're gonna get one of the best chips possible so if you're scrolling around watching youtube you're not gonna notice any much of a difference there this year they have this new camera button on the side you can press it to access different gesture but for me when i was using this phone i all almost forget it's there or I never really use it. I don't know. It's nice to have an extra shortcut button, but I guess the muscle memory is not there. I still use the on-screen stuff if I want to change camera and different modes and everything like that. But I do like being able to quick launch and you can turn on the camera that way. But unfortunately, the muscle memory is not there, so I still <laughs> launch the camera the old-fashioned way. Action button is cool. I'm glad they finally gave it to the base model, the base plus model. Last year, they just kept it on a Pro, so I guess this is a new Apple strategy. With the Pro phone, you're going to get all the highest and newest and greatest feature first. And then eventually, the following year, you're going to get some of that feature there. So the new action button, you can customize it. I personally just left it as the mute button, which is what has always been over the last 10 years. And I find that to be the most useful. And oh yeah, Apple's intelligent is supposed to be something that you get on this phone. But as of now, October 9th, it is not available yet. If you do want to access it, you have to wait for the beta period. Uh, do some testing and you can play with it that way i don't find a lot of it to be useful but you really want to use ai there's so many different tools out there google photos got the ai all the er magic eraser and things like that if you want to play around with it you can download the chat gpt app which is what i use so you don't necessarily have to wait for apple intelligence even apple intelligence they still leverage chat gpt so depends what you want to do with ai they got some cool stuff there but a lot of it is available on the web um, via a quick Google search. Changes are pretty minor. If you've used any iPhones in the past, it's going to be another iPhone. I do notice that the notch is, does appear to be smaller, which is nice. Not a fan of those big notches back in the day. And Dy Dynamic Island is, is here on the base model. Initially, when that was announced, it was only on a Pro model. Now you get on the base model. So it seems like the base model is slowly getting better. And then the Pro model is getting just a little bit better. <laughs> If that makes sense. One thing I did notice when I was opening the box for this phone, the phone's in there, you get the cable, the nice braided USB-C cable. Nothing crazy, but I'm glad they finally updated to US, uh, USB-C just like everybody else. But they were forced to because the EU made them do it. Now they just do it across the board to save money, I guess, at this point. And yeah so there's no sim card ejector i was looking for that in a box if you live in the u.s you're not gonna get that maybe other parts of the world you might still have it i'm not a fan of eSIM, but i did use it specifically just for this phone because i don't have an option in the u.s i prefer just swapping out sim cards anytime i want some carrier they only like swap eSIM up to five times a year if you change phone a lot that can be a pain i do phone testing so i do change phones a lot i know most normal people don't so that might not be a problem for you just something to keep in mind that 
you do have to pay if you swap your SIM card more than five times, depending on what carrier you have, or I don't know, just look into it. But versus just the old classic SIM, you just pop it up, take it in and out any phone you want, a thousand times, a hundred times, you're not gonna have to pay for that. Yeah, so those are just some of my initial thoughts and impression on this phone after using it for a few weeks. I'll do a final review in the next video, but I did wanna hit on some of the how I feel about this phone just switching over for the first time after using Android for many years. It's been fine i love the battery life on this phone the camera is good the only annoying part is i can't edit videos on my windows computer because i don't get the highest quality i haven't figured out a work around that or haven't really spent time looking it up but it's annoying unless you have all afro products it does not have always on display it does not have high refresh rate if you care about that apple intelligence not really there either so if you're buying it for that you gotta wait a few months until it becomes available overall it is a two-handed phone it requires a lot of reaching and stretching and but despite some of the challenges the best feature about this phone hands down is just a battery life i can just technically not even charge it overnight i can whenever i drive around i can plug it in if i have a wireless charger i can toss it here and there and not worry about it at all so there you have it let me know what your thoughts are on iphone 16 pro plus iphone 16 plus it's so hard to keep track of all these names let me know if there's anything else you want me to cover remember to like and subscribe and see you guys in the next video